Whenever my friends see me working on the computer after five seconds, it's guaranteed that they're like, wait, what, what just happened? <laughs> because I'm so fast in doing it. And you know, there's this quote of like, if I had 12 hours to chop down a tree, I would spend 11 sharpening the ax. And that rings so true to me. But the people who work from their computer, the knowledge workers who use this thing day in, day out, they actually rarely take the time to figure out and what makes me better at this. And now we have AI, of course, which changes everything, but still we need to use our computers and there are so many things that can make it so much faster and enjoyable for you to do. So in this video, I wanted to show you my top keyboard shortcuts and apps I use to work faster, specifically on Mac. If you're not into this for more than 10 years, I'll guarantee you that you'll find something here that's new for you. I'm still discovering things and almost all of these, I use them every single day, multiple times. So I'm sure you'll find something that you'll have in here. Now there's one thing, if you see this and you don't use it, then you're probably not gonna remember it. So I do encourage you to, whenever you see like a new shortcut or a new app, pause the video, go ahead and do it, maybe rewind if you missed it, but really get it in your fingertips so you get a feel for what it is like and how it is to you. So let's get started and let's go with the first thing. This is like the simplest shortcut, but the one I use basically the most, and it only exists on macOS, except if you install another application. Let's say you're in your files here, and I've got like a bunch of pictures and photos in here. So, well, I'm using the arrow keys to go up and down because I wanna use my keyboard, because switching between the keyboard and the mouse, it just, it takes a lot of time and moving around. If you just stay on the keyboard, everything's much faster. Anyway, you can move up and down, and you don't, I don't really see what this is about. So what if I wanted to show it? Most people just double click on it to open the file. But what you can actually do is you can press the space bar, and then you immediately see a preview. You don't even have to open the file. And then even more, you can still use the arrow keys to go to the previous and the next file. So this is absolutely amazing. I use this all the time because I'm looking through my files all the freaking time. And so that is the best way for me to just see what I need to find. Another thing that really only exists on macOS and I use all the time are the ways that you can manipulate text. Now you're used to editing text and typing in and most often you'd make mistakes, but most of the time you actually make a mistake in the word or in the whole sentence. Now you can use the arrow keys to go forwards or back. Okay, nice, that's not super useful. But if you hold option, now I press the arrow keys, I jump each word. Now that means that the option thing is the word thing and we can do everything we want. We can do option backspace and then you delete an entire word. This is the one I use all the time because I just want to redo the whole word every time. With option backspace, I do this all the time to just delete words. Now you can go even further. If you want to redo this entire sentence, you can actually hold command and then backspace and then you delete the entire line. You can use the same thing with the arrow keys. Command with arrow keys gets you all the way at the front of the line. Command arrow right gets you all the way to the end of the line. And so you can also hold shift with these. So command shift to left means that I will select the entire line. That's super useful if I just wanna copy paste this stuff. And those really are the big text editing commands that I use all the freaking time because they're so useful. Let's say you're in a form. This one is another one that I use all the freaking time. You type in the first thing and then you wanna to go to the next one. So most of the time you just like take your mouse and kind of find the next thing, kind of click it. Okay, that's fine, but there's a better way. The tab key, so the one right above your caps lock, this one goes to the next field. You can just keep tapping it. Now, there's a few other things you can do here. The shift key is kind of the other thing. So the tab tabs to the next thing. But if you press shift tab, you go to the previous one. So that will help you figure out like which field exactly I need to fill in. And now you can remember, we can, co we can combine this with other things like Marcel. Oh, I type my first name, analyze. No, my last name needs to be there. So I can do option shift arrow left to select my last name. Command X to cut it so that copies and deletes it. I press tab to go to the last name field and I press command V to paste it in there. Maybe this is like overflow for you if you haven't used these keyboard shortcuts before, but like practice it a few times and once you get it in your fingers, you just, you don't even think about it, it's amazing. So tab gets you to the next field, shift tab gets you to the previous field. Now, there's more things we can tab through. If you press command tab, you actually switch between applications. So I can go here into Obsidian My Notes or I can do Command Tab again to go back to my browser. You can also combine this with Shift. So Command Tab goes to the right here. If I press Shift, it goes to the left. This works in basically all applications. Now, if you're in your web browser, if you wanna to go to the previous or the next tab, you can press Control, Control Tab, and that lets me switch between the tabs inside of my browser. So Normal Tab is in Forms, Control tab is a little bit bigger, right? So it's between the tabs and then command tab switches between applications. 
And if you press shift with any of those, it goes back in the other direction. So that's kind of the principle for you to help you understand this. Now that we're in a web browser, you're probably in here most of your day. And so there are so many things that you would want to do over and over again, like creating a new tab or closing a tab, etc. So these are the shortcuts for it and they're pretty easy to remember. I'll help you out. If you press command and T, that stands for tab. So that lets you create a new tab. So hello world and I'll search and this creates a new tab for me. Okay. How do I close a tab? Well, the tab is kind of like a window. So you would press W for window. Command W closes the window. If you want to close the entire application, you would quit it. So that's command Q to quit. But asking me to confirm, I'll just leave that. But so command T for creating a new tab, command W for closing a tab. If you want to create a new window, that's new command N. Now command N is something that works in almost all applications to create a new document, for example, or create a new file in Photoshop or like almost any application understands this. So let me just command W out of this and close this window. Now maybe a website you're visiting is kind of broken and you need to retry it and you can press command R to reload it and then just refreshes the entire page. And if you want to open a specific file, this also works in all applications, command O for open and that will let you pick something. Have you ever used YouTube? <laughs> there are really cool shortcuts in here. So if you're on a video, you're playing a video, well, you can press a space bar to pause and play, which works in almost any application. Again, if you're watching a video, space bar pauses and plays it. Now there's even more actually. Now you might have noticed that the arrow keys go forwards and backwards and the arrow up and down lets you change the volume. Okay, that's pretty cool. But if your keys are on the keyboard, where are they? If you look, there's little indentations on the F and the J on your keyboard. That is where your index finger should be. And if you look here on the right side, we have J, K and L. So these are the natural places that our fingers rest. And good applications think about that so that you can have the most ergonomic way to use your keyboard. YouTube is like this. You can press the K key to play and pause. You can press the J key, which is right to the left of it to go back. You can go to L key to go forward. So K, L, 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 J, L, K, L, L, K. Super, super useful. What if you wanna to go to full screen? Press F for full screen. That's just on the other index finger. And then we can press again to go out of it. You can press M for mute to mute or unmute. Press C for captions, show the captions or hide the captions. You can press T for theater mode, which makes it kind of big, but not yet full screen or smaller again. And so I use this all the freaking time. This just lets me go through YouTube so much faster and so much easier. Let's go to another one. And this one is huge and it's actually an application. Now your Mac has some of this built in. If you press command space, something will show up. It's not the same thing as this. Something will show up and there you can search for anything. So I use this all the time to launch applications. You see that my desktop is super, super clean. Like I don't use my desktop. I don't even use the dock here at the bottom. All I do to launch an application, press command space. Let's say I want to launch Arc. I type in Arc and then I press enter to open it. Now Apple has this built in and it's great, but there's a whole nother level if you install a tool called Raycast. A Raycast lets you do a whole other level of extra stuff. So if I press command space, for example, I can go to next on Spotify. I can play the next song from here, or I can look at schedule, which shows me my schedule for today. I can add a reminder all the way from here. They even have window management function, so I can sue left half and it resizes this window to the left half of my screen. This is super, super useful. Or let's say I'm in Bali right now and I need to convert a local currency into what I know, Euro. So let's say I have 200K IDR and I ask in Euro, and it converts it immediately. This is just a calculator, I can do 200 plus, uh, minus 800, you know, it comes up with it. like everything it is instant. It's immediately right there. So this is absolutely amazing. I cannot more highly recommend Raycast. Another thing I use a lot in Raycast is the caffeine mode. This might be a plugin. I don't remember, but caffeine makes sure that your computer doesn't go to sleep. So if I'm recording a video, it like goes to sleep because it just shows me and I'm just talking to the camera, but I turn this on and that makes sure that my computer is caffeinated. So it stays awake all the time. Another really cool thing is the screenshots. So if you go to screenshots, I can search through my screenshots, but the cool thing here is that it searches through the text on the screenshot. So if I type in Marcel, it shows me the screenshots where my name is somewhere in the screenshot. This is extremely useful, super easy to find your screenshots again. Speaking of searching through screenshots, there's another app which is kind of insane. And this is like a true AI app. It's called Rewind. And Rewind, once you have it running on your Mac, it captures everything you do all the time. And so this is kind of this weird thing where it's like it knows everything. So if I go here into Rewind, let's say I do Ask Rewind and I want to ask it 
give me 10 ideas for my newsletter about something I did that was interesting last week. And now what this is doing, it's looking at all the stuff I was doing over the past week, and it's gonna combine and find stuff that I could write a newsletter about. This is like absolutely wild. This is super easy. Like, let's say you wanna do research or something, you just scroll through a few pages and then you ask it about it. It's like, this is this is super crazy. I'm on the free plan right now, so it doesn't show me much more, but this is wild. Honestly, I don't use it that much because like, I, I don't know, I don't have it in my mind yet how to use it. And there's also a thing where it uses quite a lot of your battery. So if you're on battery power, I tend to just quit the application because I want the thing to stay for 10 hours and not just for like four hours. Let me teach you a bit about how I manage my windows in Mac. You see that my desktop is super clean and there's like no windows here. Like, how, how do I do it? So honestly, I like having every single application on full screen. I wanna use all the screen real estate I have and I don't wanna be distracted by anything else. So if you're on a window, you would go to the top, left, press this little green button to go to full screen or you press command control F that switches between normal and full screen and almost any application. And then what then happens is you take your three or four fingers and you swipe on the trackpad left to right to go between all the different apps. If you used three or four fingers and you swipe up, then it shows you the overview of everything that's happening. So this is super useful. I can drag and rearrange if I want things to be in a different order. I can just click it to open it. And this makes it much more easy for me to find and feel organized and not be cluttered everywhere. Okay, this video is already getting quite long, so I'm just gonna show you one last huge thing, which is the HyperKey. I have a tool installed that's called HyperKey, and HyperKey gives the caps lock special powers. Now, I don't really use caps lock to type in all caps, I just hold the shift button, that's totally fine for me. So I don't really need that, but it's in a really great place, it's just underneath my pinky. So what I like to do is I use my caps lock as an escape. So if I have a window open and I wanna close it, I just press escape. So let's say I'm in here and I wanna close this, I press escape and it's super easy for me to do that. So escape is something I use a lot. Now, what HyperKey does is if you hold the caps lock key together with something else, then you can do whatever you want. And I've set this up to switch between applications. So if I press Shift S, it goes to my web browser. If I press Shift O, it goes to Obsidian, my note-taking tool. And so this way, I don't have to go this left-right thing to find my application every time. I'm just like, boom, and I'm there. And this saves me so much time because it's like, it takes me two seconds or something, but I'm doing it hundreds of times per day and it's, it's so great to know exactly what you're doing and to know precisely where you need to go to. Now, this note-taking system, that's a whole other thing and there's a bunch of more things. So if you like this, please like leave a comment below, tell me more about what you wanted to hear about, if there's some feedback you have for me and I'm very happy to keep showing you more and more on how to get like the most of your computer. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.